Hey everybody, Rodman here. Thanks for tuning in to Mercury Fallen. This is episode two, and let's pick up where we left off. We had just expanded our bedroom so that our people could properly recover. Uh, what I'm trying to do is add in some cooking stations and a refrigerator so that we are making our own food and not relying on the survival mills that we've been finding and that we started with. I am pushing ahead on the research here, so let's open up the research screen. Uh, at this point, I'm going to unlock fine dining. And that is going to allow us to build some additional um, food. So one is the food dispenser. Uh, but I'm going to need to put that in a new zone. So let's take a look, actually. A food dispenser, an eating table, and a cafeteria floor. Uh, so the kitchen is for preparing food, and the fine dining area will be for actually using it. Um, what do I want to do? I want to destroy a few tiles here. Let's blow up some floors. And that will allow us to put a dining room there. Additionally, it wouldn't hurt to be poking around for some additional uh, colonists because as we unlock new research, we are also going to need people to um, sort of specialize in that new research. All right, so cafeteria floor, here we go. Um, we are going to paint that right like that. Making sure that everybody has tasks for work. All right, it looks like to me there is a, a path down that way that I want to explore. Maybe that we can uh, find some additional robots or people. That'd be pretty cool. Uh, I did have one tip, which was the UI highlight sound is brutally loud. So I'm gonna lower that a little bit. Hopefully that helps. Uh, we can unlock decor, but I'd rather push towards uh, more meaningful projects. Uh, the cooking station is 100% done. At this point, it's going to need power, and it's also going to need uh, water. So power is pretty easy. Just run some cables from our last conduit. And in fact, if we're doing that, uh, we're probably going to want to run it over to the refrigerator as well. And the water is going to be from the water pump here once that is constructed. Uh, now that I actually hear the UI noise you're referring to, yeah, I can I can definitely lower that a bit. All right, looking good. We will get that underway. I'm going to accelerate time here just a little bit, and I'm going to keep mining out into the unknown. Looks to me like there's something here as well. And I'm going to start mining south as well. Oh, yep. Found some sort of buildings. Now, if you remember, right at the start, when I randomly generated the map here, um, there was indeed a, uh, a sort of mini-map, an overlay of all of the buildings that will be found here. Um, and as you can see, for now, I can just queue up, like, destroy wall tasks, and I can kind of see into... The unknown a little bit um there is how to put this there is um yeah there the fog of war here is not strictly respected i guess is the uh, easiest way to put it but uh with that said it doesn't really matter because um you're only exploiting resources on your home tile so it doesn't really matter if there is a uh, strict fog of war or not now, there are some resources like the Azurite or um, the Anthracite or the Hematite that you're going to need a certain amount of. Uh, the developer himself have said that uh, he feels like um, there's too, much, too many resources on the home tile. And in future iterations of this game, plans on making resources a little bit more scarce, having you, uh, forcing you to go explore for them 
but that is currently not the case. This game gets uh, patched up a lot. In fact, I would say uh, I am on a different patch than last episode. There's been some hot fixes. So, um, you know, the, the pace of development here is rather rapid. I just want to make that clear. All right, so I have a lot of little uh, base construction projects that I'm currently work waiting on. Gonna make these dark storage. I don't know why. Um, so it would be best for me to not add some additional tasks to the queue and let them do it. Uh, tech process, uh, tech printing is something I very much want to get done. So the tech printer here requires an assembly lab floor. Um, and if you check here, I don't have such a lab. Uh, so the best thing that I could do is to add it. Um, I could add it. Ooh, let's see. Let me uh, let me add it down here. Let me reclaim some of this area. I know I'm adding a lot of goals, a lot of construction tasks. At some point, your construction queue. Right now, I have 40 things queued up. I should probably, a lot of that is uh, mining, um, but I should probably stop adding tasks until people catch up. And part of the problem is I don't have a lot of materials. I don't have a lot of the uh, structure resin to do the tasks. So my, um, I'm, I'm having to engineer that stuff. My red shirts. All right, looks like uh, water pump is coming together, which is great. And then once I've got the water pump powered up and I'm bringing water out to the cooking station, I will be able to start cooking and uh, processing my potatoes that I've been growing for quite some time. And I have a, a bunch of created potatoes here, uh, processing the potatoes into food. All right, so most of the construction tasks right now are just uh, power conduit. I also have a lot of recipes to be unlocked. So these recipes are from the tech printer. Um, let's go ahead and unlock some of these recipes. So the craft efficiency would be really nice. And the sturdy frames and back braces, these are all for um, uh, equipment that that people can wear and I'm going to start unlocking them and manufacturing them when I have the chance. All right, so here's my little assembly lab. And I found a tech chest that had uh, a colonist log, a bunch of electronics in it, some fasteners, a robot assembler blueprint, which is very cool, a improved inlet valve and a improved power coil. So the power coil is something that could go into your coal generator, make it generate a little bit extra power. Uh, the inlet valve is something that I could put into the cooking station so it consumes less water. Um, the thing is, you don't really, water is not a scarce resource, I, sh I should uh, point out. So it's not super necessary that I, um, you know, I get those comfy shoes. Yeah, let's get that ready to be printed on tech. And all these equipment uh, level or um, makes our colonists stronger, or more capable, more comfortable, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Oh, looks like we're eating some raw potatoes. So, with that said, um, would really be good to get the uh, power conduits and the uh, the water um, set up so that we can start cooking. Because, yeah, we're going to get stomach stomach aches while eating raw potatoes. And that's going to lower our health and then lower the efficiency that we have for uh, jobs and, and whatnot. It is important to stay healthy. Now, a medical station would definitely help with that as well. Um, let's get a little patch kit. All right. I'm going to take matters in my own hand and start to uh, 
move some of the water conduit up top. Not worry about the assembly floor. We'll have that be at the bottom. All right. And now we should be prioritizing getting the water pump uh, powered up. Let's take a look at the... Okay, so it's just a few conduit here. Now the issue I see there is they might not have, actually have a line of sight. Uh, so what I'm going to do is blow up some walls to let them uh, get access to it. I think that's what's going on. I could always run the conduit elsewhere. Or I could uh, remove the walls temporarily and grant them access to that spot. Um, and yeah, there they go. Check back to the overlay here. The water pump is now pumping water. And we can add the walls back. All that, all these walls do is, is they're just decor. Uh, so now the crafting station. Uh, so cooked potatoes is the only recipe I really know how to do. I'm going to cook if I have below 30 and apply that. And we're going to store all the potatoes in the refrigerator. And then next up, we are going to want to add a dining table. And maybe what I'll do is expand the dining room a little bit, a little bit more. And then we're going to want a food dispenser. This uh, dispenses the, the potatoes that I have out to people that want to eat them um, a little bit more efficiently. All right, so let's expand the cafeteria floor. Not necessarily the most efficient uh, build design, but yeah, I'll have to do. Uh, taking a look at recipes here, I am going to keep unlocking the recipes that help to improve my, uh, my people and my processes. And soon we'll have a tech printer um, which will be real nice. All right, so we've got that big old eating table right there. And then I am going to remove one more tile here. So the eating table is just where people can go to comfortably consume food. Um, some of you commented the meme of RimWorld. Uh, eating without a table is kind of a war crime in RimWorld. It can make people go crazy. Luckily, in this game, it's not as severe, but with that said, you shouldn't um, make your people uncomfortable if you can help it. So, food dispenser. Uh, green is where it can be deployed. So, there it is. That's why I added the extra little spot there. Let's keep unlocking these recipes. And soon we will have tech printing. So at the moment, uh, let's see, we are waiting on bioplastic for tech printing, which is something we get from hemp. Um, and it looks like we have a somewhat limited amount of hemp here in the farm. So it would help to possibly add some additional crop fields. And I'll go ahead and do that. And this is waiting on a bunch of bioplastics, as is the eating table. The eating table, um, let's change the order here a little bit. I want the food dispenser and the eating table to be the top two priorities. So we get them constructed first. And then I can also um, switch the crops over at the end of the next potato harvest to hemp, if I really feel like I need to... Uh, gain some hemp. Uh, so here's a material minerals chest. We have another colonist log. I have not been reading those, but and there's some processed materials in there as well. And then an organics chest, which has some hemp, some resin, some bioplastics, and another uh, yet another colonist log. If I check the discoveries here, I can check all the colonist logs and read them. They're not necessarily in order yet, but um, or I don't have all the ones in order. I should say. Alright, looks like the eating table is up next. And then people will be able to de-stress. Because right now my stress is ridiculously high. Needlessly so. I really could have been doing a better job of that. 
Uh, but people are leveling up, the robots are becoming better haulers, and people are becoming better at their primary tasks. Alright, I'm going to plant a run of hemp, a big run of hemp, so that we have five hemp farms, and that way we get all the bioplastics I need for um, all of the construction tasks, because right now we're falling a little bit far behind uh, from the lack of bioplastics. Alright, so I just ordered a new hemp process, and as you can see, it didn't take the uh, Shannon Roberts, our botanist, very long to do any of that. It was pretty simple for her to just plant that. And now she's making the eating table, and next up will be the food dispenser that requires a lot of plastics. So another way to get resources besides um, manufacturing it yourself is to uh, find it out here on the map on this sort of destroyed sunken colony and break down things that you see to gain their resources. And what I like to do is, um, just so that I, I can, I like to sort of mine out all of the stuff around the colony once I have idle workers. Uh, and that allows me to find things that are close to the colony that might be useful and also uh, potentially, um, you know, expand into new territories. Which is very, very useful. All right, so here's some more recipes. Improved scanner, improved mining laser. Here's some minerals chests I've uncovered. So some more processed minerals and another colonist log. And yet another one, more processed minerals and a colonist log. And all of these finds here uh, help to supplement um, the resource gathering that our people are doing. You know, obviously finding a chest full of processed minerals makes it quite easy. Looks like I have a decent amount of hemp. And I am certainly growing a lot of it. As my guys level up, uh, they become more efficient at whatever tasks I issue them. So work will get done faster and faster. And as you can see, uh, as you can imagine rather, um, adding to my population would be very, very nice. Alright, so here's the food dispenser, finally. Well, it's not getting built yet. And I have to keep an eye on my potato account. I don't currently have any um, cooks. So what I'm going to do is my botanist, when she's not doing botany, she's going to be cooking and then she's going to be building. Actually, you know what? She's going to be hauling. Uh, I don't really have a lot of haulers. So... There we go. We're starting to cook potatoes, and that will reduce the amount of um, stomach aches we get because eating raw potatoes, obviously pretty nasty, but eating cooked ones, yum. Big old difference in the two of those. Uh, we do need to run power out to that now. Let's make this a high priority, get that powered on, and then we'll start to be uh, feeding people, you know, cooked foods properly. Oh, here's another minerals crate. More processed materials. Another colonist log. So we're getting a bunch of Alex Kenner's colonist logs. He was... Yeah, I mean, you could follow around on that. Now, another thing that I'm going to need for all these um, power conduits... The, yeah, is the structured resin. I think we have a lot of structured resin. We just don't have anyone with a high priority of building. They only really build when they're idle. Um, I could always switch Chuck Jones or uh, Joyce Brown to build when they're not uh, build instead of engineering as the primary. And that would get them to build these projects a little sooner. All right, 
And now my hauling bot is bringing the cooked potatoes over to the food dispenser. And that allows us to refill uh, a lot more stress-free. So checking my stress levels, uh, here we go. I am going, oops, that's not what I meant to do. Gonna make sure we get the bench and the chair up next. Waiting on some refined cloths. All requiring quite a bit of hemp. And I'm also gonna research some decor. I feel bad having super, super high stressed uh, colonists when I'm able to help. Ooh, that research station looks pretty bad. Might have had an accident or something. Getting some basic construction done. Putting some additional hallways on. I could always add uh, additional farm fields, but you know, for now, this is just fine. Um, let me remove some of this floor. can even move this over one tile and have it line up better. Oh, here's another tech chest. We have getting more electronics, some fasteners, another power coil, improved power supply, which reduces the amount of power that is consumed from uh, something. So let's add the power supply over here uh, to the research station so it consumes less resource. Soon we will have all the bioplastics we need for this tech printer. I'm going to make it high priority. And we should see, uh, not quite yet, but soon, stress reducing. Uh, we have, if I check my decor overlay, the decor of the bedroom here is becoming a little bit nicer. It's not great, but a little bit nicer uh, than it was before. And that's going to help people de-stress when they're uh, they're using it. I can also add things like standing lamps um, to the cafeteria area, and that will have the same sort of effect. What I really need to do is robots. So you're a hauler robot, and you're my mining robot. I don't. We're going to have Chuck become a technician. Actually, I'm going to reorder him. He's going to be building, technician, and then engineer. Or actually, technician, building, and then engineer. So he repairs things as a priority. I'm trying to keep things from being broken down. Again, if I added to my population, this would be... I could have people be a full-time technologist. Uh, some additional... Minerals and blueprints for uh, specialized machines, and that will come into play uh, later. All right, so here is Chuck. Uh, now that he's an engineer, I'm going to change his clothing layout, give him sort of a white gray to match the wrench. Now, a lot of the things that are broken are broken down right now, much because we're high stress, and as a result, uh, we're making mistakes. Uh, so some potatoes and another colonus log in that.
But as I improve their workstations and improve their bedrooms and things like that, uh, we will start to bring these stress down. And if you ever need info about um, things like stress and needs, uh, the guide here is a great place to, to look to. So the research station is coming back online. I'm gonna add some nightstands to the bedroom. And we're getting the tech printer and that, that tech printer there is going to be a very, very helpful in uh, making our population more efficient. All right, keeping track of my food, 36 potatoes, and yeah, we're gonna want to clear current crop and put potatoes back here. All right, so here's the tech printer. Uh, what we could do is craft if below one. So that's one back brace, uh, one sturdy frame. One comfy shoe. One thinking cap. One sturdy servo. And one microchip. All right, great. Now with this tech printer, what will end up happening is we will get things like back braces uh, and that will allow our people to put choose it as equipment and level up their muscles, which allow them to, for instance, carry more stuff. And that's, oh, we're leveling up in mining. Failed at cooking, that's fine. And because I've chosen to craft one uh, when we uh, have less than one, We'll, we'll always have one in storage. Uh, what will end up happening is I'll eventually get back braces for everybody and and then get um, comfy shoes for everybody. And, uh, you know, everyone in our colony will have that sort of benefit. So comfy shoes adds to your athletics. And then thinking cap adds to your smarts. Wicked smat. Oh, I found another tech chest. This has a water pump motor. Now the engine is for later. I won't get into that now because it isn't really applicable now. But um, eventually you go to the surface and you can explore and survey the surface. And um, those types of engines are not for your little minor robots. They're for surface exploration. I'm just checking on how many potatoes I have because at some point I might want to uh, make sure that I'm not running low. So checking the decor of the bedrooms, it is improving yet again. My stress is, as you can see, is starting to come down. We're sort of de-stressing here and there. I haven't actually designed a very de-stressing um, colony yet. You know, it's it's not perfect, but it is getting the job done. All right, so I can't store any more tech here, so I better use it. Uh, surface exploration, or actually, I'm gonna do medics for now. I'm not ready to research surface exploration, despite its 
obvious benefits. So someone like Joyce Brown here now has um, the comfy shoes, which allows her to run faster. Um, and that's a very cheap investment for the benefit of being able to move around the colony faster. Uh, look, look at the speed of um, Shannon Rogers here at Athletics 2. Um, you know, someone like her would definitely benefit from a nice pair of comfy shoes. And then my last person that needs a brace. All right, I'm going to give my researcher the thinking cap for kind of obvious reasons. Um, he uses his brain more than anyone else for research purposes. But he is so glued to his research bench, he's not really moving. Not yet, at least. Uh, we're on, definitely uncovering some interesting facilities around us. Surprisingly enough, we haven't happened upon a n new pod, but I'm sure we'll find one. If I really wanted to find one, I would dig, dig deeper. Um, we are running out of storage here, though. Uh, so our regular storage containers, I'm going to add yet another one. So life support helps to increase the amount of um, popula max population that you can have. Let's unlock some recipes. Let's unlock some glass and silicon carbide from the ore refinery. So let's add this. Um, refined organic, silicon carbide, craft if below five, and refined organic, glass, craft if below five. So now we'll have a little bit of a, a you know, an amount of resources. Colonist, colonist log two. The day after coming out of stasis. Now that I've excavated a fair portion of the surrounding, I guess, cave, um, I would definitely benefit from um, targeted exploration. Uh, and by that I mean exploration where I have a very specific uh, area in mind trying to find everything. So all of my colonists here, oh, Chuck, you need the back brace. Col this colonist screen is uh, pretty handy to try to figure out um, everybody's current status. And my stress is still fairly high, not great. There's not a lot of downtime because there's a lot of work that needs to be done in this colony. And that's sort of the uh, why I'm being penalized. So we unlock some additional buildings. Let's see. We have a medical cabinet. Uh, this is required at the med bay floor and it increases decor. A lot of these furniture things just decrease, increase decor. So, uh, yeah, you don't necessarily need to worry about them so much. Uh, let's see, recipes, I'm done. All right, so technology, let's get life support. Uh, as I mentioned, life support just increases the max amount of humans that you can have in your colony, um, your underground. So it's presumably you're just you need to make more oxygen to breathe or you run out. Uh, but I still have a max of 10 and I'm at 4. So it's it's not a, a it's not something I'm going to need to build anytime soon. 
there's a little bit of wiggle room. Additionally, my robots, I'm starting to make um, robot equipment. So I'm going to hook the robots up. Um, these are exactly like the colonist equipment. Um, really no different at all. And worth setting up because your robots, especially your robots, would need muscles because a lot of your robots are going to probably end up hauling. So I'm just making sure that all of my colonists are getting the tech printed stuff benefits. As you can see, we um, are manning this pretty much full time here. So that means that, you know, there are going to be components. Yeah, there we go. Servo and all right. So these two worker robots are now super upgraded uh, where, you know, if we take a look at them, they'll have, um, you know, sturdier frames, sturdier servos and microchips, making them faster and smarter and stronger. Um, and as you can see, it really does matter for carry capacity as this like little worker uh, able to hold a lot more. Nope, here is a food chest, organics chest. Actually not a lot of food in there, like sand and resin. Let's do another research. So surface exploration, I'm gonna unlock that. That is gonna require a new room. It's gonna require, well, let's take a look at what it adds. So we have shipping. This is an access point. Um, essentially, if you want to send things to the surface, needed items, you bring them to shipping. So I'm going to add shipping right next to this elevator. This elevator is what takes you to the surface. And then we need a comm stations, which requires an operations floor. Uh, so what I will do is add an operations floor here. Operations, if I recall correctly, does not require a large footprint. And then let's go ahead and destroy this here and remove the floors there to have it be hallway. I like to add really as much hallway as I can to increase the movement speed because it's, you know, why not, right? Oops. Hallway floor. And then that will be the operations room. And much like the research room, it does not require a large footprint. Oh, my cook is now level three. Taking a look. Yep, we're a little low on potatoes. So what I'm going to do is change the crop, this hemp over to potatoes and maybe uh, use up this additional space to add in some more crops. So what I'm going to do is order them to mine out this area. Here's a minerals chest. And we are getting a lot of those logs. We have 82% of them. So here's day one, day two, day five. Not every single one necessarily exists, but. All right, come on, botanist. Get back to work. Let's make you even more green. Make the red shirts even more red shirts. Ooh. Bit of a river there. All right, so this, let's clear it and make it potatoes. Checking back on our colonists here. Most of them don't really require thinking caps, but I might as well hook them up all with what they want. Um, have them be as smart, strong, and fast as possible. Oh, yeah, my food is mighty low. Go 
ahead and encourage some additional farming. Right, I'm going to deselect all mining and just mine this out because I think it's uh, urgent is a strong word, but yeah, it's going to be important that I get some additional food. It's also uh, possible that I find it. So another thing I could do is dig into some ruins and try to find old, um, old cafeterias and manage some food. All right, so we are mixed on our research yet again. Let's get data servers. So data servers, uh, what they allow is they allow you to store some extra data. They are a research room uh, item and they store, so right now my current max research is, I max out at 300 and each data store that I will add will increase the cap by a 150. So I'll be able to store more research and therefore get harder to obtain research. Um, and get those queued up. They're pretty expensive, but they're necessary. All right, my colonists are still very stressed though. So other things I could do is add decor items to their uh, place of work to try to improve the, the stress. So what I will first do is, um, is try to make the research room a little bit nicer. Hmm. Surprisingly, I didn't actually find really anything in the in here. Thought I would. up to remove there that construction uh, let's hope yep I'm getting some additional raw potatoes and I don't have any food s stored right now but I will start building it up it doesn't take long to start to build up a significant amount of food supply fortunately potatoes grow pretty fast Now, if you see down here, um, I am just about maxed out on power uh, generation. Like, I am not really going to be able to generate any more power. Uh, so, machine equipment, I can add a improved power supply or improved power coils. So, let's craft if below one. And go back to that tech printer. These tech printers are amazing, man. They really are. Um, let's see. Tech. Electronics fasteners. So electronics, I'm going to craft below five. Fasteners, craft if below five. These are all like components, high-tech components for stuff. And then patch kits, craft if below three. Machine equipment. Improve power supply, craft if below one. So what I can start to do is all of the items in my colony that require a lot of power, I can start to add um, improved power supplies to them to lower my power requirements. So I don't have to just build a new coal generator. Uh, I can just reduce the power load uh, around the, the, the base. And then another thing I want in the tech printer is the craft efficiency. So did I already have one of those cranked out? Power coils, no I did not. Uh, machine equipment, craft efficiency is a really nice one to have because it could, 10% of the time you'll get twice the research. Uh, here we go, vehicle construction. The vehicle construction bay is extraordinarily expensive. Um, 
geothermal power would be pretty cool. I haven't actually found any geothermal power. And then some of the uh, rarer blueprints that I've been uncovering gives me access to cloning humans or um, aeroponics. I already got those as well. Or building robots. Uh, all of those are expensive. Uh, finding robots and finding humans a lot cheaper than making them. I will just I will just add. All right, so what I'm gonna do is start mining tunnels out to the, oh, I'm already at the edge here. I selected a small map for a reason uh, because the extra large maps offer you so much resources that you don't really need to leave the base. And this is a known balance issue that the, uh, the developer has already mentioned. But uh, I'm just about out of time. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. I am eager to show you some additional features in future episodes. If you have any tips, tricks, feedback from me, questions of any type, drop me a line. I'm happy to respond and comment. Thank you all so very much for watching. I'll catch you all later. Adios.